The people of Nazareth were, were scandalized by the wisdom and miracles of our Lord and Savior. They took scandal at the good deeds done by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because they were, they were jealous and proud, full of themselves. And our Lord was a, what they call it, they call it a tall poppy, stood out above, above everyone else and their reaction was to cut him down. And it says in the Gospel of St. Matthew that our Lord was not wor able to work many miracles there because of their lack of faith, because they refused to open their hearts to his wisdom and to his mighty deeds. And they identified him as the carpenter's son. They said, who, who is this who works these mighty deeds and has this wisdom? Who does he think he is to do these things? and to speak the way he does since he's only the carpenter's son. He's just a carpenter and the son of a carpenter. He makes things, but he's not God and he doesn't speak for God. And yet, our Lord was not scandalized or humiliated or otherwise um, or otherwise did he judge it unfitting that he should be known as the carpenter's son, the son of St. Joseph. God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son to redeem the world and our Lord took the form of a slave and became in the likeness of men to save us. And he submitted himself to the condition of our humanity, becoming the child of Mary, dwelling under her heart in her womb for nine months, and then being dependent on her like every child is dependent on his mother for his nourishment and for his life. And he was reputed to be the son of St. Joseph, although Our Lady remained a virgin because God wanted him to be born in a, into a family and to work the great miracle of our redemption in this humble context by becoming a baby, by growing up as a child in Nazareth, under Mary and Joseph being obedient to them, hidden in his humanity for 30 years before he began his public ministry, and then teaching for only three years. Most of his life, he didn't preach. He worked with St. Joseph as a carpenter, and nobody knew the difference. So when he came out preaching the gospel and working miracles, People were taken aback, especially those in Nazareth who knew him. They were um, surprised. Uh, they didn't know what to make of it. St. Joseph was chosen for this role to be the foster father of our Lord and the guardian of the Virgin Mary in order to allow Jesus this um, full experience and to allow us the full experience of our Lord's sacred humanity and, and to show us the way. Saint Joseph was placed in a position of responsibility and yet our Lord was the one who came to teach and to save. And Saint Joseph was open to the wisdom and the mighty deeds of his foster son. 
and he humbled himself to take upon the responsibility God gave him and to see it to the end. It's always a matter of accepting our Lord on his own terms and being humble enough to, to follow him. The people of Nazareth needed to recognize that this person they thought they knew was something more than they actually had come to understand. When he revealed himself to them, who he truly was, they were unprepared for it because they were proud. St. Joseph was given a responsibility, um, you might say, infinitely beyond all proportion. He, is a humble, he was a humble man, a carpenter, and yet God revealed to him that the son of Mary was the son of God and it was his job to be his father. We can think about our own pride sometimes when, um, you know, in the various ways in which it worked, the people of Nazareth were proud because they were sort of shown up by our Lord and they didn't like it. Uh, they wanted to be, you know, they wanted to be in a, on a higher place and they didn't want our Lord to be higher than them. St. Joseph um, it was completely different. He was put in a position where he had to be reputed to be the father of someone he knew to be infinitely wiser and more powerful than he. Sometimes we can find ourselves in that position in our own life where God asks us to take responsibilities for things. He asks us to do jobs that we would prefer not to. In religious life, you know, sometimes you get assigned to something that you know that everybody else in the community is better at than you are. And you have to do a job to the best of your ability, which you know is going to be inferior. You know, and in a worldly way, sometimes we'd like to reorganize things and have the superior assign the more worthy. You know, the world is like that. We think the person who's best at something or who should be given the job or the honor is the one who proves himself to be better than others. You know, we have the idea that authority should be exercised that way. We give the job to the best man. Uh, but for example, the Holy Father, the Pope, St. Peter, the first one, uh, was not chosen because he was the best or the most competent or the most talented. He was chosen for his task in the wisdom of God's providence that is inscrutable. Uh, and uh, St. Peter from time to time showed that he felt the burden of, of his office and that he would rather it not be his, you know. Our Lord told him when you are a young man, you did what you want and went where you wanted and now that you're older, you, you will be bound and taken places you don't want to go. That's just the way life is sometimes. And St. Joseph gives us an example of this docility to the wisdom and the power of God. And it remains, this, the, ex the example of St. Joseph remains at the heart of, of um, the dignity of human work, which is what we celebrate in a certain sense today. This feast instituted by the church is a sort of um, a counterpoint to, to the Soviet May Day, which you know, um, uh, was very much contrary to the dignity of the human person and work seen not so much as a, a function of, of making money or a function of, of uh, supporting the state, but as something that makes us like God. We work because God worked. We work because God has given us the ability to know and to love as he knows and loves, and we can take the things that God has given us and we can make them, we can make them better. God wants us to provide for ourselves and our effort to do so, uh, you know, is part of our dignity. Uh, unfortunately, because of sin, it remains a, a, a also something difficult and toilsome. And yet, um, when we do it for the love of God, and not simply for our own uh, self-aggrandizement, you know, when we do it to please the Lord and not simply for money or 
or power or or fame or a recognition uh, when we do it like Saint Joseph did it not because he was necessarily the best you know there's that old joke about you know how Saint Joseph couldn't do anything right you know because he had to deal with Our Lady and Our Lord all the time uh, you know, it's a sort of worldly way of looking at the situation, and yet at the same time, we could see how we would be humbled to live in that situation. But St. Joseph did his job because it was the will of God and because, you know, it, 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 it was pleasing to the Lord, even if, his, even if the uh, outcome of his efforts were not as perfect as even, you know, his son uh, was able to accomplish. St. Augustine says that there were plows made by our Lord that existed in, the, uh, in his own day that were still in use because they were made so well. Imagine St. Joseph making something and then our Lord standing right next to him making something as well. It's not, in the, it's not ultimately the effect of our work that is what makes it worthy. It is the fact that we uh, have that dignity of the children of God to work and to create things and we are called to do it in order to lift up something to God that is, um, that is uh, pleasing to him. And so as long as we are giving the first fruits, you know, we bring the best that we have before God, God doesn't compare things, you know, the way that men compare things. The widow's might was as pleasing and even more pleasing to God than the wealth that was thrown uh, into the temple by those who had more than she, because she gave not from her surplus, but from her substance. She gave the best that she had. And so we ask St. Joseph that we might be able to do the same, that we might be able to give God always the best that we have, and that we might not see things from a merely human, worldly point of view, from the point of view of pride, the way the people of Nazareth saw our Lord, that on the contrary, we might see things from St. Joseph's point of view, the point of view of a just man whose desire is to please God and to work as hard as we can for God's kingdom, even in our imperfection and weakness, even with the, all the limitations that we know are present in the things that we do. Uh, we are called to do the best that we can and to leave everything else in the hands of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ and his Holy Mother Mary. And so today we pray under the patronage of St. Joseph that we might um, continue to work for God's kingdom and the fulfillment of our duty uh, out of love for the Lord, with a desire to please Him, and with a pure heart that seeks only to please Him and to do whatever He desires of us. Then we have access to His wisdom and His mighty deeds, and we won't ask any questions. We'll be seeing miracles worked. We will um, be a place and a, and a person that God is able to work his miracles because we have opened our hearts to him and have given him all of our faith, hope, and charity.